quite lucky being at the Design Academy. I've been for the last 20 years. I head of the department of the Man and Activity. And one of the things that I see evolving is, again, I would say a little the influence of the technology, the, what I call the digital world. That's one aspect. But on the other aspect, no. I'm a little quite practical when I talk to my students in the sense that for me it's very important because we only have four years in the school, so it's quite limited time, let's say, to become a designer. No, you cannot become a designer in four years. And I always say, I, I, can, I learned to understand design maybe when I was 40. <laughs> no, then really understand, oh, what is the meaning, how it is, how do you really work? So we try to tell my students, or try to kind of stimulate to think about you know, why are we doing things? And second, the more important is, for who are we doing? I think that there is certain discipline in life, and then you have 40 years, and hopefully you know, they learn some basic things about what is design is about, the thinking, that it's a thinking process, that there are some tools, there are some methods that can help us yes. create these different translations of the right. different situations. Right. That there are also, in some way, you could say, yeah, design is about kind of problem solving, that could be one way. But for me, it's much more about, design is more about discovery, about the idea of imagination, yes. to imagine, also to think about what if could be this, what if could be that, but also at the same time thinking for who, you no, know, what if, who's going to use it. And how, how does it work as a couple in your private life and a couple in your professional life, uh, which is working in the field of architecture and which is working in the field of design? What, what are the synergies and what are the, the kind of dynamics around that element of it? Uh, I think the synergy is approach to idea and we always ask ourselves together what is the idea, what do we want to achieve and to be honest we don't separate us privately and professionally, we are whole as a person and then we also try to bring up that what you are, our, our, our authenticity, our true essences and we exchange most of the time in this question, what is the idea? And then there's a definitely in the process different approaches. Uh -huh, when uh -huh. uh, maybe Martin has this architectural approach, I have product and fashion design approach, and right. then we split in the moment with our teams and uh, probably work separate, separately. But then we gather together, right. and we are like this 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 excitement again to be gathering yes. uh, together and then exchange again. This this is what I called through uh, crossover, like a transdisciplinary approach. And then we follow the pretty much uh, same strategy by doing structured work, also time, uh, time limited and uh, uh, um, process, uh, but we always allow to each other um, to bring up their backgrounds in this process. Yes. So there's not much how to say <coughs> Maybe I don't know English word. We don't block each other no, on right, this process. Right. We, the we, friction is not, not there. there. No, uh, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. And the wonderful okay. thing is, yes. like today, we can absolutely explore, yeah, explore the, the, the exhibitions <laughs> and yes. stroll around and right. and and this is a wonderful thing if we can share it together. Right. And, okay. Share and, the different observations. And I think yeah. as a Architect and designer, it's very important that you live your passion. You cannot do your job nine to five. Mm -hmm. right. So when you, when private and professional right. merges, mm -hmm. and you don't feel it like right. you are right. there or there right. now, it's a huge no. gift. I've been fascinated by this thing that you, they're explaining that that the, that the product is very static, or that it gets more and more static the more we go into mass production. And uh, I believe this is uh, very important that we have mass production, but at the same time, it loses a bit of the value uh, that the product uh, grows with a person when he uses it. Uh, with this uh, frustration with a, with, with a lot of modern products that, that when they tear out, they get ugly, I wanted to bring this, this, this beauty of getting older back into, a, into material. I started looking into how, in how many ways I could reach this effect. And as you told, I'm, I'm doing, still doing the research and, and discovering more possibilities of applying the same uh, uh, tools into new uh, materials. Yeah. How important is materiality? Super important. You can't do anything without... We, we can't do anything without really understanding... I, I, it informs the design process. You know, once upon a time, actually when I was at Nokia, it was funny because we had this separate CMF team, so Color Material Finish team. 
and um, we would design the, the, the process at that time was to you design an object, you design the phone, and then you'd kind of give it to the CMF team. Yes. And I was like, whoa, man. And apply their sauce. Over yeah, over. That's, that's, that's kind of ask about tip, if you right. pardon my right. French. Right. But it, right. so we started to approach it from a different perspective. You know, let's understand what the materials are, you know, what kind of palettes we want to use, what kind of materials we want to use, and help that to inform our design decisions because you need to understand the processes of course because different processes will give you different different results of course so yeah and also you know colors are so important like there are some objects that can carry all sorts of colors and some objects that can't carry all sorts of colors you know you have a Mercedes S class it doesn't look very good in pink you know but you take an old Porsche 911 you get the right shade of pink it just kind of works somehow but not so or brown, you know. Nice. Porsche started making brown sports cars. Yes. You want a Ferrari in brown? No, it doesn't work. <laughs> the, the difference that I find in between being an architect and being a designer is that when you're an architect, you're more um, anticipating everything before starting because everything has to be solved and discussed and agreed before you start building because there's little time to change things but when you're designing it's more a try and test uh, process you're more feeling the material you have an idea at the beginning but that idea it's able to change through prototypes through the feeling of how the the, the object is doing so I think it's it's more rich in that way because yes. It's not just about this, the, the initial idea that you have, that you want right. to make, but you also have to respond and, 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 and being able to, to see what the material gives you back. Look at furniture, the chair resembles the, the, the body. So uh, to me that's interesting. Uh, for example, a table is much more abstract. And, um, also, as an architect, to me, it, it feels the most like a, like a building, like designing a building. And it's, it's actually to, to design a chair for an architect. It's like a yeah, it's an architect's freak show, you could say. Yes, yes. And at first, I was uh, when I started to design furniture, I was like um, I was a little bit uh, unsure uh, because all the time I was thinking, I'm an architect. So why would I design furniture? Because it's so simple. And then I discovered, especially with the chairs, that uh, it's, it's as complicated as you want it to be. And, and even when you're looking for the most simple solutions, it gets more complicated. Yes, yes. So it's, it's really a strange and, and wonderful experience. What is difficult is that, of course, the, the Academy is known for very beautiful and outstanding mm -hmm. exhibitions. Uh, what's shown again now at the Saloni, uh, where the exhibition Touch Base, it's yes. a very tactile Indeed. and pleasant environment. Yes. And of course, also there a lot of research is shown, um, but it's not always very easy to express that and yes. to disseminate research, because that uh, demands a different kind of curation. So what we uh, tend to do is to wing the exhibition, for instance, with side events, uh -huh. workshops, as well as conversations oh, yes. that we do, in order to give students and other people the opportunity to discuss projects or to share knowledge. But it's also something that uh, yeah, we explore by means of thinking through making. It's just trying things out, uh, prototype it, <laughs> yeah. and see what, what works because it's not uh, something that designers are very familiar with. And right, I think right. a lot of people are searching for new means and ways to, uh, yeah, to express knowledge. Hello, uh, Mika. Hello. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, you and your work. Mm -hmm. you, um, uh, you have a creative design agency. You're an interior um, designer looking at projects. Uh, but what I find interesting is that uh, there's a, a, a sort, of, sort of temporal aspect to your work. If I see what you've done here with the Mensa, is um, uh, standing here for a week and yes. it's finished again. Yeah. And that, that's very, very interesting. Tell me a little bit about that whole concept. Um, 
It starts actually uh, in our home in Ghent. Uh, we live in, we bought a small factory in Ghent um, and we've rebuilt it to a place where uh, we can meet people, where we can live and uh, where I can work. Yes. And it's, the house is in the middle and we've got the front garden and the back garden. The back garden is a private uh, uh -huh. place. Yes. The front garden is a place uh, where we organize food events. I think the only way you can see how it works is to make a temporary uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why we came to here with, with yes. containers. Yes. And containers are a very interesting thing. We, we asked other designers, when do you have things you want to, to have transport, transport yes. to, to Italy uh, so we can do it yes. and then we rebuild the containers to a restaurant ah, so okay. after the fair the design goes in All the containers back. and the restaurant is gone yes, so yes. and then we can rebuild it on, on other places as a, as a designer I like to uh, find out why I like certain designs or why people work so for example I also Read, read about you to, to know who I'm, I'm with and why you're designing the things you designed with your team. Um, so that gives me the opportunity to, uh, to find out where, why I like it. So when I see something I like, I try to, um, how you say, uh, tear it apart, yes. uh, go deeper to see why it's why it looks or is produced like it's produced or is it looked like it looks. So that's what's important for me. Yes. And that's the starting point sometimes for uh, a conversation like this or for a new design or a new material. Uh, so that's, um, that's why I started writing and now the stories end up in blogs, magazines. Now if I talk about the context of everyday objects, it's very wide, very yeah. broad, yeah. and talk about the context of jewelry. Yeah. It's very focused. Um, uh, how do you deal with the, these two? Very, uh, they're, they're interconnected, but they're yeah. also disparaging. There is very yeah. broad in that sense. Yeah. So how do you um, bring that about? Uh, That's a very um, interesting take on this question. Um, I think what maybe a couple of things. I'll just throw it out there. We yes, can see what yes, works. Please. One is that they both have the human as a, as a, as a constant. Um, and um, in a sense, I understand what you're saying with jewelry being focused because there's a definition of what jewelry is. Right. Within the jewelry area, there is very different context of what jewelry can mean. Um, from totally wearable within a context of production to really such an emotional communication that the body becomes part of it, but wearing it is not the key reason for it. Sort yes, of. Yes. So it has the body. And everyday object we define as things that we surround ourselves, that we make life with. So the body is also involved, but the interaction is on a different level. Yes, yes, um, yes. And you're right, it's very open. And students, of course, immediately ask, you know, what is it exactly? Sure, yes. yes. Because we come from a making point of view um, and everything is made, we tend to be on the non-industrial um, level. And, and that separates us from product design or industrial. So, Charlotte, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about your um, experiences as a, as a young professional. Do you, how, how important is that person, that user, that person uh, in the context of design? It's important. They are the ones to, to, to carry it, to bring it into their homes. Uh, but as a designer, you are trying to tell a story or make a concept uh, out of it. And I think uh, if you want to really tell that story, you should listen to yourself and what comes from listen to what you want to say right. to the people. And then yes. if that's honest and and uh, yeah, if it's honest, then people will uh, resonate. Yes. 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 I yes. agree. I agree. Salam, Hosan. Salam. How are you, man? Good. How are you, man? How are you? Very well. Hosan, I want to talk to you a little bit about the work that you do. Um, you are very much involved in the research of rituality, of uh, heritage, of uh, uh, um, looking towards the past to bring things to the future. Um, 
and how you combine it with your work, with your design and with your development and your creation. Tell me a little bit about this. Yes, I think the reason that I am inspired by language and rituals and tradition, uh, these things by, together then it creates a rich uh, 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 heritage. Yes. And in the end, uh, when you uh, keep the heritage in life, you keep a culture in, in life. Right. Because a culture without heritage, that is nothing. No. Um, that is why I discovered, and especially in Kufi calligraphy, yes. uh, I did a study about it and I made a, a, a typography yes. with a Dutch uh, typographer Thomas Miller. Yes. Uh, I had the chance to study all of these shapes. Yes, yes. And after I decide why is the shapes looks like, for example, like, like this, why, why is it so different than Nastale, for example, or, right. or Rock or Thulet. And I discovered, or this is kind of my uh, idea that in some way the sculptures before religion came kind of transformed in this calligraphy. Ah, they turned into language. Exactly, and ah. I thought, what is it possible to take it also back? To, to make it more sculpture, volume, and give it new shape that it do have nothing with right. religion or, or something, but just some things that are strong if you set it if you put it in, in a space yes that's survived by his, it, it, its own when you talk about a story um, uh, tell me wh where does it start how do you your your process where do you where do you start to get your ideas from uh, what are your inspirations it's always different it's, yes uh, I find it sometimes hard to find it back uh, right right when our last time last last uh, last year I was um, quite interested how, how we treated data and, and money is always a theme in, in my work uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, till now uh, but I think data is now a new kind of uh, currency because um, yeah you, you on the internet everything is free but in the end you pay with it uh, because they get all your data from your uh, from your phone or from your right, computer right right and with right. this data they earn money so it's Correct. in a way it's a currency yes. for me i see it as a new kind of currency and uh, with this new newest project i'm showing now here in milan yes um, and to get people aware of that but then within a positive way uh, uh -huh. so uh, it's an installation it's a living room and in the living room you uh, um, all the pieces of furniture have a have a sound system in there. Have a piece of piece of a thing in there that makes a sound, and I need a little bit of your data. If you put some data in it, you get a personalized uh, music piece ah. made on that data, and uh, and that's why that's in that way I want to. Uh, Make you aware, but in a positive way, you right. can have a nice experience. That exactly, yeah. you give back something to me. I give back you something to you, take. but also, yes. also, um, yeah, you could also be aware that yeah, some people. Yeah, I need your uh, your bank card, for example, or your passport for yes, to yes. get the data. Right, right. And some people are like scared to do it. Correct. Yes. It's safe to do, but uh, I, I don't do anything with it. But the strange thing is that also people put a credit card through it, and if I save it. Can, I would be rich, you know, yes, it's just, yes. but it's just so strange that how people um, yeah. In, uh, don't take it serious. No, because it's intangible. They, they, they exactly, you know, yeah. uh, if you have to give your wallet to somebody, you feel bad. But if it's a number or a piece mm -hmm. of data, yeah, that's very interesting. Talking about that, uh, that, that connection. Yeah. Um, what kind of advice would you give to a young designer who wants to? Uh, elaborate yeah. to grow yeah. to show. Yeah. show yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what what do you think they should be doing and thinking about it? Yeah, well, m many things. I have to say, you know, not every graduate designer will be a designer. I think that is something we have to realize, and I think it's also something that is good. It's normal, yes. It's of normal. Course, yes. What I always say to the designers, to come back on your question, is I really, I I look on what point they are at this moment and where I think that they will go. I also explain them that if they do not have any commercial ideas about it, then maybe it's not the time yet, because I mean, yes. at the end, you have to live. It's, right, right. it's a world where, where, where it is important. Plus, um, uh, they have to be ready. I mean, to come here with a product still wet off the paints and have no photos, no brochures, no, no ID what Very you... Very good, yes. I, I mean, that is really important because yes. From there, 
the moment you you are here, the moment you are do, uh, at the Salona del Mobile, everything is, can happen so fast. It rolls, yes. And then it's good. You have to take that moment. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready. Yes. In the in the in our department, the Design Academy, we do not teach design. Mm -hmm. You must learn by doing. Right. And some of them are kind of surprised. What do you mean? No, exactly. I, I pay money here. No, but you know, design you must learn by doing. Yes. And for example, one of the tools that I, I put a lot of emphasis is to draw. That they must draw a lot. Yes. You know, and when I mean a lot, I want them to draw every time they come to a lesson with 20, 30 sketches. Yes. Why? Because I think drawing for me is important because it's, it's drawing teaches you to observe. Yes. And I really believe anyone in the world can become can learn and benefit from being a very good observer, even a lawyer, a nurse, Absolutely. and an accountant. So teach, drawing is such a fundamental. And they, of course, later on, you can also put it in the computer. That is very powerful because maybe help us know that. One of the great things for me at the computer is, as a tool is that this repetition, that you can do one thing and then you can say copy paste and you can do it 20 by and maybe do variations and very quickly. That hopefully that you cannot do as fast if you have to do one by hand, one by yes. one. So in that sense, the computer is a fantastic tool, but you know, the computer doesn't think, no, it doesn't necessarily think. You have to give the input still. But So for me, it's important that first students do and create the thinking in a piece of paper, and then they can translate it into the computer to help them maybe finalize it or to, to do something else. So the student that has made the most models usually has the best result. Because he, he experimented, you know, he learned by doing. Yes, it is a process yeah. at the end. So it's not magic, you know. This, you know.